Margaret and Robert Duckworth. Pioneer settlers of Anderson's Bay, Robert was Dunedin's first professional hairdresser and a real character among the early settlers. Robert Duckworth was born in Spain during the Peninsular Wars in about 1814. His father, a Scottish soldier from the 5th Dragoons, who used various spellings of his surname, including Ducket and Ducket. Nothing more is known about Robert's early life until he married Margaret Humphrey, or Umphreys, in Edinburgh in 1835. Robert had trained as a cabinet maker and she was the daughter of a mason. Yeah, they lived in the Stockbridge area of Edinburgh, rather a nice place as you can see. Robert here in St Bernard Crescent and Margaret in nearby India Place. They were married at St Cuthbert's Church not far away in the centre of Edinburgh and later lived here at the other end of Bernard Crescent. In 1841, Robert was working as a gentleman's servant and his family lived at East St James Street. Now that whole street has now been obliterated and covered by a big modern shopping complex, but just along the block is this building, possibly from that time, and it may give us some sort of idea of the type of tenement building that the Duckworths were living in. They had two children by then, as well as Margaret's mother and teenage brother living with them. Only two blocks away was St Andrew's Church, the centre point of the historic rupture in Scotland's Presbyterian Church in May 1843. Imagine the Duckworths following the drama unfolding on their doorstep and perhaps being on hand to watch the dramatic walkout of nearly 200 ministers and elders who walked out of the church's general assembly to establish the breakaway free church. We don't know if the Duckworths supported the free church breakaway in 1843, but we do know that five years later, they signed up to join the free church colonizing scheme in Otago, lodging their applications for assisted passages to get there at the association's office here in South Hanover Street. Robert and Margaret sailed from London with their now four children on the Mary at the end of 1848. A fifth child was born in the very basic setting of the immigration barracks in Dunedin. The family then set up house in Walker Street and Robert returned to his trade as a carpenter. He added a second string to his bow by offering barbering services two nights a week at the Royal Hotel. By dint of his witty personality, he quickly became a favourite with his fellow early settlers and prospered. Within a few years, he was able to save his earnings and buy some land of his own here in Anderson's Bay, where he began a market garden. Asked by the governor what his occupation was, Bobby Duckworth replied, a carpenter, a barber, and a gardener, and I made a fiddle all out of my own head. Well, replied Sir George, you're sure to do well in a new country. Two years later, when news was received in Dunedin of the new New Zealand constitution, Bobby Duckworth was selected to proclaim the good news as a peur suivant, a town crier in the manner of old Edinburgh. He went through the town ringing a bell and reading the proclamation, suitably mixing due solemnity and his customary humour to create an occasion of fun and celebration that was long remembered in Dunedin. Robert Duckworth had a period as a keeper at the Dunedin Lunatic Asylum, and he also had a crack at gold prospecting when gold was discovered in Otago in 1861. He and a group of friends had a claim here at Waitahuna that proved unsuccessful. But when the partners sold out to another party who dug deeper, they found lots of gold. Despite that disappointment, Robert's adaptability and hard work paid off in the long term, fulfilling Governor Gray's expectation that he would succeed in his colonial career. When he died in 1886, aged 72, Robert left behind six surviving children, as well as what an obituary described as a neat, well-kept piece of ground at the bay that testifies to his industry, perseverance and judgement in his capacity as a gardener. Sadly, Margaret died two years later after a six-year battle with cancer.